Hi everyone, Happy New Year. Feels weird to be saying Happy New Year in February, but I haven't posted on this channel since 2023. So yeah, Happy New Year. Um, today's video is going to be a wrap up of all the books that I read in January because it was a really big reading month for me because I had a lot of days throughout the month where I was working from home due to the weather and just like the shop being busy. And so in that time of working from home, I was able to incorporate some audiobooks into my workday, which I've come to discover is one of my favorite things, you know, just typing away on my computer while an audiobook is playing in the back. Now, granted, I can't do that with all my tasks because some require like a lot more precision, precision than others. But when I'm able to, it's really fun and it really helps me stay motivated throughout the workday. And so I'm going to be relying on my handy dandy reading journal. Remember, I said I was going to keep a journal this year to help me keep track. And that's what I did. I got this journal from Michael's. I put a bunch of different stickers that I've collected over the years. Really conquered my sticker anxiety with this one. And I'm especially glad I have this journal because most of my books were from the library. And so I don't have like a physical copy to show, but I will be sure to add in pictures and whatnot. And so this journal will be my guiding force through all of this. And so let's get on with the books. My first book of 2024 was Confessions of an Alleged Good Girl by Joya Goffney. And I summarized it as 17 year old Monique Tinsley had the perfect life to others, at least as the daughter of a preacher, she was confined to strict expectations by those around her. But there was more to her beneath the surface as she comes to discover after her longtime relationship with her boyfriend Dom comes to an end over something that wasn't really her fault. In the days following the breakup, she forms unlikely connections and reaches out, reaches epiphanies that ultimately change her life. And so this is a book I actually started on December 29th, 2023, but because I finished in 2024, I'm counting it as a 2024 book. Goodreads also counts as a 2024 book, so it all works out. And wow, this book, I really liked it. I rated it a five stars and I just remember being able to connect with Monique at different times. I mean, despite the fact that she's 16, 17 in high school and I'm reading it as a 22 year old with a nine to five, I was able to connect with her on different points as she began to learn more about herself, understand boundaries and how, how she carries herself in this world is very important as she grows because how she sees herself affects how she shows up in relationships, whether platonic or romantic. And there is also this other element that, about her family life that was very integral to how she saw the world. She had an, a sister, an older sister that basically went no contact with her family. And she was very young at the time, didn't quite understand why she had left. And so seeing her navigate that as well was also just really interesting to see. Fortunately, the book overall had a happy ending. Um, that's all I'll say. It's really hard to talk about books without giving too much into it. But overall, it was a great read. I'm glad it was my first read of 2024. My second book was The Joy Love Club by Amy Tan. Tan. And I read this on both ebook and audio because I had started off as an ebook, but I couldn't quite connect with it as well as I wanted it to. So I had to finish it up in audio book. Um, all in all, I had rated this a three star book because I just really found my, you know, I should probably tell you what it's about before I get into my thoughts. And so I wrote... The Joy Love Club refers to a weekly gathering for food, community, and mahjong. Four Chinese women developed amid conflict with the Japanese. It was their way of creating joy during a difficult time. The Joy Love Club eventually became a decades-long tradition, even expanding beyond the country to the United States. When the modern-day women gather to play in the United States, one member is absent due to passing away. Her daughter plays in her place, or at least tries to, as she engages in painfully awkward conversations with the late mother's friends or the aunties, she discovers her mother led a more complex life than she thought. And so going back into why I rated this three stars, why I had two formats going on at the same time. And, you know, I had sold this book recommended on TikTok. I was really drawn into how the creator had portrayed the book. So I was like, okay, I got to read this. Complex mother-daughter relationships, the immigrant experience gets me every single time. And I had high hopes for this book going in, but like I mentioned before, it was really hard for me to get connected to it and not necessarily the plot line not being interested, interesting, but how the author wrote the plot line, if that makes sense. Like 
I understood what was happening, but also there would be points of the book where I didn't really understand what was happening. And then different characters are being introduced, different perspectives, different timelines, and it all just got jumbled up. And I really wanted to tough this book out until the end because I just had hope that things would turn around and it did at the end. Like it made it to the end. And so in thinking about my thoughts about this book and rating it, I just thought it'd be such a disjustice to give it such a low score, but I also didn't want to give it a high score at the same time because I felt like that wasn't indicative of my experience. So I just gave it a solid three. Up next, my third book of January was Bluebird Bluebird by Attica Locke. I had listened to this via audiobook. This is when I started was doing my work and listening to audiobook at the same time. And speaking of work, I discovered this book after I asked my colleague for book recommendations because during our staff meeting, I saw that she had an elaborate bookshelf and I was like, okay, you're a reader. I need to know what you're into. And Bluebird Bluebird was one of the books that she had mentioned to me. And I am so glad I picked it up, especially because I was drawn into it as soon as I looked it up on Goodreads and I was like, yeah, we're reading this. The summary I had wrote was back-to-back -back murders of a black man and a white woman in Shelley County, Texas, catches the attention of Darren, a former law student turned Texas Ranger. He believes their deaths are somehow connected, but everyone else says otherwise. He travels to Shelby County anyway, involving himself in a mystery deeply entangled in the featured residence's his histories and embedded with stark racism. This was my first time reading a mystery book since elementary school, back when I was very much into A to Z mysteries. I hope y'all know what that series is, because that, that was really what got me into reading. That and Geronimo Stilton and a couple others. And... I just don't really know what to expect when it comes to mysteries, I feel like, nowadays, because I spend so much time reading literary fiction, coming of age, type that type of stories. But when I saw that there was a race element, race relations element embedded into it, I was like, yeah, I gotta read this, because, you know, political science, African-American studies girly, like, race relations and me, we go together real bad. Um, I just really enjoyed this book. The plotline was captivating. I kept wanting to see what was happening next. And so I think... If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I finished this book in two days. And that's because I had it on 1.25 or one and a half times speed. I had my headphones on. I was typing away at my desk, just listening to it every single. Just kept going, 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 because I was so interested. And I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up in my top books of 2024. And as I was listening, I kept trying to figure out the mystery, like who did it, who done it. And I was wrong in the end. And it was like so blindsided. By that, like I'm glad the author had written the mystery in a way that it wasn't easy to pick on up on from the jump. And this book was, however, a four star read though, because I just I had an issue with how the narrator's tone or language was throughout the point throughout the book. And at one point, Darren, the main protagonist, he sort of encountered he counters the widow of the man who was murdered and they have like a weird relationship going on which i didn't find to be all that ethical especially given that he has a wife at home and while they were having issues in their relationship i just didn't like how close he was to the widow especially because he's in a sense working for her it should be professional and boundaries and all that but aside from that it's a good book book number four well this isn't necessarily a book per se well it's a book but it's poetry and it's called bless the daughter raised by a voice in her head poems by warson shire i had listened to this as an audiobook in a day because it's like i mentioned before it's a book of poetry and how i summarize this was a series of poems centered around someone who really only has themselves in life bless the daughter i'm a daughter the only daughter the oldest daughter daughter of immigrants and you know, it pulled me in. And for this book, I say book again, but I mean like poems. I had given this book a no rating simply because with poetry, it's, it's sort of hard for me to rate poetry, especially given poetry centered around somebody's experiences. It just, I didn't know exactly if I were to rate this, what I exactly I'd be focusing my rating towards. And these, this book of poems is really what led me to start being more comfortable with rating things as a no rating, not because I think it's good or bad, but because I just feel like some works just can't be confined to that star rating. 
the entire experience of listening to these poems really took me back to high school because every year in like April or so we would do a poetry unit and I haven't really touched poetry since then so it just it was a blast from the past moment. Book number five, Frying Plantain, Zalika Reed Benta. This is a book I actually do have a physical copy of. Now if I could figure out where that is. All right, here it is. I got this book for Christmas this past 2023 by my aunt. I had requested it because it's been on my TBR for a while and I couldn't find it at the library. What I wrote about it in terms of summary is frying plantain, plantain, plantain. You know, as a Haitian American, you would think I know how to pronounce it properly, but I don't. Forgive me. Frying Plantain is a compilation of 12 short stories following Cara Davis, a Jamaican Canadian, through her formative years. The stories give insight to how both her two identities and familial relationships affect how she sees herself in the world. So, as previously mentioned, I'm Haitian American. The protagonist is Jamaican, and I was able to see some similarities and differences between our two cultures and an additional layer to her being Canadian, me being American. Same, but not same. And I really enjoy reading Caribbean literature, so this book, I had to have it. And I rated it uh, five stars. And I took note of the fact that Prime Plantain was my first physical book in a while. And that was really important to me because I, part of the reason I was so, I guess, hesitant to be a reader more often again is because physical books, I can't always connect with them that well. And so audiobooks were really what got me into reading to begin with because I can do anything while listening to an audiobook. And physical books really force me to sit and slow down and just like focus on that. And sometimes I just don't always have the time to do that. But but this book, it didn't feel like a chore to pick it up and just flip through it. Like I really enjoyed it. Alrighty, we're nearing the end. So we have book number six called Heaven by Mieko Meko Kawakami. I should have looked up the pronunciation before I did this video, but because when I first started reading it, I paid attention to how it was pronounced, but it's been maybe three weeks since I read it now, so I'm trying to remember. Mieko? Meko? I'm going to go with Mieko Kawakami and be sure to look up the rate. Blech. The pronunciation while I'm editing. And this was another book that I gave a no rating to. This was an audiobook, if I didn't mention that already. And how I summarized it as a 14 year old boy with a lazy eye is relentlessly tormented by his classmates. He has no friends until he finds a connection with a girl, girl classmate who is also bullied. They can find in each other and attempt to make sense of the cards they were dealt with in their respective lives. I have so many thoughts about this book. And let's start off with the fact that I gave it a no rating. This is very similar to Bless the Daughter in that the themes, the ideas, the topics covered in this book, I just feel like were too grand for me to assign to a number rating. Like bullying is serious, it's real. Um, familial trauma, that's another thing that comes up in this book. And as I was reading, I was like, yeah, there's no way it could just, a star rating wouldn't do this book justice. And I just found myself at various parts of the book feeling so frustrated for these children and how they're being treated. And, you know, even, there's even at one point in the story where the boy character who, whose name isn't indirectly re directly revealed in the book, the kids sort of call him Eyes because of the fact that he has a lazy eye. So there's one point in the story where Eyes even confronts one of the bullies and the bully's answer was just so manipulative and gaslighty and it just, it upset me so bad because it's like, this kid is trying to tell you how he feels about you and your friends treating him and you just brush it off like it's nothing. And there was just this one scene, particularly towards the end of the book, that's like, unspeakable and it was just hard to listen to but still an important read nonetheless and yeah that's really all I have to say all right last but certainly not least we have book number seven which is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert I read this as an ebook and I read it a five-star book here's what I wrote for the summary after nearly losing her life through an auto 
accident she witnessed. Chloe Brown realized that had she died, the legacy she'd leave behind is boring. So she set out to change that. This is no easy challenge for her. This is no easy challenge for Chloe, Chloe as she has fibro fibromyalgia. There's days where mobility is difficult for her. But nevertheless, she persists with the help of a special someone she meets along the way. Hmm. That little special someone she met along the way. Their relationship, it was very much enemies to lovers in the best sense of the way. And this was my first Sally Hibbert book, the Brown Sister Trilogy is something I've been seeing a lot online. And I'm really glad I read this book. Uh, this special person, his name is Red. Well, Redford Morgan, but Red for short. That's what he goes by. And just their chemistry. Like, even when they wanted to bite each other's heads off at the very beginning, I was like, ooh. And to them being, like, lovers at the end, I was like, ooh. And I really enjoyed the book overall. I'm happy to see that the female main character was... A black woman, a plus size black woman, and I like how that detail wasn't glossed over throughout the book. And it also introduced me to a reality that I'm fortunate to not experience, which is having a chronic illness, and how that can be really isolating because she talked Chloe talks about how she lost friends, she lost her fiance because of the, her illness and that just made it really hard for her to put herself out there and meet new people and I was upset for her really and I'm glad that she had read and trying to figure out how to make her life more fun and it really inspired me to take more risks with my life because I'm really trying to do things scared more often because I find that some of the things I've done scared have been really great decisions. All right, those are all the books that I read in January. It was a little bit of everything in terms of genre. I enjoyed each one. There was no book that I DNF'd. And, you know, I'm really sitting here trying to think if I had a favorite throughout this whole month, but I don't know if I really could say I have a favorite because I read so many different genres and it wouldn't be fair to put one over the other. But I really had to choose. Let's see. How many books did I give five stars? I'll space it on that. Three books that had five stars. And that Get a Life, Chloe Brown was my favorite book of January. Just because I remember so vividly how all of my reactions while I was reading. And I was really just tap, 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 tapping on my Kindle trying to get through it. Um, I have the other two books in the Brown Sister trilogy on my TBR to eventually read at some point this year. I'm looking forward to reading those because Chloe's book introduces her sisters and gives some background. So I'm really interested to see how they act in their respective books. That'll be fun, especially the sister Danica or Danny, because it's mentioned that she's a PhD student and as an academia girly, I just want to see what, what she gets herself into, you know? This is sort of off tangent, but just like a thought that I was having throughout January and reading all these books and that I thought that I was going a bit too fast in reading all of these books. Like I thought it was so bizarre for me to be reading seven books in a month and that I should slow down, that I need to stop worrying about meeting my goal or I just need to, you know, like I felt like I was maybe just rushing through the process and it was making me a little nervous. But then I had to remind myself, you know, that I'd read for fun and I can read as much as I want, as little as I want. No one's gonna, like, who's gonna call me out on how much I do or don't read? And I think the only reason that I was feeling this way is because on TikTok, listen, I try not to compare myself to others, especially on social media, but the reading wrap ups that I was seeing on TikTok of people reading upwards of 100 books a year, I feel like that got to me a bit and I felt like I needed to be on that level, but I really don't. Like, 23 books last year is really good, 24 books tentatively this year it will also be good and I just need to do what's best for me trust the process enjoy the journey like slow and steady wins the race or in whatever other metaphor there is out there about taking your time because in the end it's all okay I hope you all enjoyed this video let me know what your favorite books were that's all thank you all for watching bye